What's good, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. So we're going to be breaking down UFC Fight Night. Edson Barbosa versus Lerone Murphy. Featherweight bout, of course, and Edson Barbosa looked great in his last bout. Lerone Murphy has looked pretty great in his last 14 bouts. He's unbeaten, 13-0 with one no contest or draw. I don't even remember which one it is. But let's just get into the first fight of the night. Emily Ducone taking on Vanessa Demopoulos. This is a tough fight to call. They've got Emily Ducone as a, a strong favorite for some reason. Let me just like double check real quick why that might be. I have absolutely no reason why that is. I was already thinking to myself, Vanessa Demopoulos could win this fight, although I don't I don't know if I necessarily think she will. But you know what? I am going to be siding with Vanessa Demopoulos. I feel like she's going to be able to mix up her striking and her grappling and grind out a decision, which is usually how these fights go. But last week, I did pretty good with that. I got all the female fights right and all the props correct on them. So I'm going to, I'm going to trust it right now. Moving on up the, call, up the card, Al Tang Haile taking on Clayton Rodriguez. This is a tough fight to call. I feel like Al Tang Haile can really piece him up on the feet. Clayton Rodriguez is open to get hit on the feet, but I also feel like he's a lot more explosive. He's younger, he's taking less damage. Oh, it's so tough to call. Let me look at I'll take Hailey's record again. He lost to Chris Gutierrez. I remember that fight, that was close. Beat Chad and Helliger, beat Kevin Crew. Lost to Casey Kid. Ooh, it's actually, you know what? I think I'm gonna go with I'll take Hailey. I think I, I think he's gonna get this one done by a knockout. <laughs> Moving on up the card, Piero Rodriguez taking on Ariana Carlos Carnelosi. Carnelosi, if she's not on something, Jesus Christ, she was gifted from God with those genetics. She is a freak of nature. But despite that, I'm gonna be going with Piero Rodriguez. She's just a mean girl. I feel like she's gonna be able to win this one handily uh, by decision. Carlos is a little bit too tough. I don't see her getting finished unless Piero Rodriguez uh, like gets her in a deep submission. That's the only way I can really see that happening. I'm gonna side with Piero Rodriguez getting this one done by unanimous decision. Moving on up the card, Avis Magomedov taking on Warle Alves. Wow, we've got like the best one round fighters that you could get at middleweight. Honestly, if you want to take an underdog on this card, Warle Alves at like plus 220 is pretty solid. I don't know why it's that wide of a gap because Amos hasn't showed us anything really outside of uh, like, you know, like I said, decent first round finishing potential. I feel like he's going to win the war of attrition and just barely. So I will be siding with Amos Magomedov. Wouldn't be surprised at all if Orle Alves pulls it off though. Moving on up the card, Tamir Vidal taking on Melissa Gatto. Th these fights are pretty close. And last week I had, I had some trouble. I'm gonna side with Melissa Gatto getting this one done by a decision. I think she was just a little bit more tough and skilled. Um, but you know, it, it, it it's so hard to predict these fights. You never know, we'll see. Moving on up the card, the prelim headliner. I'm moving through this quickly. I'm not feeling that great right now. Um, and the fights are gonna be starting pretty soon. So I gotta get these out to you guys. Umar C taking on Tuko Tokos. I wish Tuko Tokos was good because his name is solid, but he is just kind of a sloppy moving light heavyweight. I feel like this is going to be a, a hard matchup for him. Umar C is 9-0. He moves like a confident fighter, like a young confident fighter, and he has power. Now on the ground, I definitely see some weaknesses, some flaws in his game. If he can get more fluid in the grappling, he'll be a menace in uh, 205. Tuko Tokos, he's got decent... Um, Decent, he moves sluggish on the feet, honestly. Like when he's trying to get a takedown, the way that he initiates, I don't like it. I don't like that he just tries to like grab and paw in. That's how you get caught on the feet against somebody like like this type of striker. Um, he's got decent ground control. He's got decent, I don't know. He's got decent ground and pound. Yeah, I don't really see this one going well for Tuko Tokos. I wish it could because he has a, he has a dope name. But I'm going to be going with Umar C, getting this one done by a knockout. Moving on into the main card. Well, well, well. Tom Nolan, he's back. Taking on Victor Martinez. Now they're feeding him somebody even 
even easier than when he got Nicholas Mata earlier in the year and he flunked that test. I will be siding with Tom Nolan. I don't know why he's a 5-1 to one favorite. Again, doesn't make sense. But you know what? I, I kind of understand because Victor Martinez, he's just not looked too great so far. I'm, I, he's the guy that got submitted by... Let me just... Oh, no. He got knocked out by Jordan Levitt. I thought he got subbed by him. And other than that, he hasn't fought in the UFC. Okay. Yeah, well, so we don't even know too much about this guy yet, but if you get knocked out by Jordan Levin like that, and it was in the clinch, I remember that fight. Yeah, that's tough. I'm going to be signing with Tom Nolan getting this one done by TKO. Yeah, maybe, yeah, by TKO. Moving on up the card, my bae, my personal favorite female fighter, Luana Pinero, taking on Angela Hill. It's tough, though, because I don't think she's going to win this fight. Angela Hill, despite her 16-13 and 13 record, She's quite good, and a lot of those losses should be wins, in my opinion. I'm going to be siding with Angela Hill, winning a really close, maybe even a once again split decision, because she, she loves to take fights to a split decision. I love Luana Panera, but I feel like she's just going to be one step behind, two steps behind on the feet. And on the grappling, Angela Hill is like, honestly, not a slouch. She would have to get caught in something like immediately for Luana Panera to submit her, I feel like. So I'm going to be signing with Angela Hill getting this one done. For fun, let's call it a split decision. Moving on up the card, Adrian Nunez taking on Vinicia Salvador. This is, they're, they're really trying to get Adrian, Adrian Nunez to bounce back, and I appreciate it. Vinicia Salvador, let's just take a quick peep at his recent fights. Lost to CJ Vigara, I remember that fight. Lost to Victor Alto Morano. Beat Shannon Ross. Yeah, and that was on the Contender Series. And that's just not a great win to have, honestly. So, easy easy pick. I was already going to be signing with Adrian anyways. He's just... Vinicius is way too hittable in the boxing department. And that's Adrian it is his game. Quick TKO. Probably in the first... No, probably in the second round, I would call it. Like, early first round. He's going to be doing good. End of the first round, he's going to rock him. And then the beginning of the second round, he's going to put him out. Let's go with Adrian Dinez by TKO. Moving on up the card, Rabiz, Rabiz Brahimaj taking on Themba Garimbo. Holy fuck. Ugh. I've got Themba Garimbo winning this fight. I think Rabiz Brahimaj is impressive on the feet. Uh, slightly impressive on the feet, but he fades. And Themba Garimbo just kind of seems like a next level prospect. He really impressed me with his knockout in his last fight against somebody that was supposed to be the striker and he was going in as a grappler and he called his shot and everything. It was just impressive. It stuck out in my mind. I have to ride with him. He's young, he's hungry. He wants the belt. I'm trusting him to get this one done. I need to see him against some higher level competition. Moving on into the co-main event. Chaos Williams taking on Carlston Harris. This is a hard fight to call. Chaos Williams is sleeper good, but he doesn't fight too often. Same with Carlson Harris. Sleeper good, but he's getting older. And that's the problem here. Now, I don't feel like it doesn't really matter for him for at least a couple more years. His genetics aren't going to be like a lot of ours. He's aging really well. Um, he's still very strong. He's honestly, Shavkat was the only one to like really style on him last time I remember. Last time I checked. Yeah, it was just Shavkat. Other than that, he's been perfect so far in the UFC. Yeah, nah. This is a hard fight to call. Carlson Harris is sleeper good. And if he gets the fight to the ground, Chaos Williams is explosive. He's a decent uh, wrestler, a decent scrambler. But I think Carlson Harris is just two levels above him. I'm going to go with the underdog here. I'm going to side with Carlson Harris. I feel like he's just going to be able to if, find his way to the ground. He has to survive on the feet, though. Chaos Williams is dangerous on the feet. You can't forget that. So... He has to be careful on the feet, but I'm going to trust Carlson Harris to get it down to the ground. Even if he gets rocked, I feel like he can find a way to get it to the ground if he doesn't get pushed straight out. And then we have the main event. Edson Barbosa versus Lerone Murphy. I got the main event right last week. I want to keep a streak rolling. It's been so long. These fights have been so just hard to predict this year. I, I want to say Edson Barbosa, honestly. I want to say the vet gets it done again. But Lerone Murphy is extremely technical. He's extremely good. I don't know why it takes so long for him to fight. Let me just look and see if he had canceled bouts. Only one canceled bout against Danny Gay. He just takes a long time to fight. 
But that win over Mach 1, the win over uh, Josh Kulubau, those are good wins. The win over Douglas Silva, Dion Drage is a solid win as well. I forgot about that one. That's a really underrated win. But none of these guys are Edson Barbosa, man. And let's be real, 2024 has been the year of turning back prospects. I think I'm going to trust Edson Barbosa to turn back the prospect. I'm going to side with the older guy once again. I'm going to side with the, the guy that's trying to defend his ranking, even though it's only just 14. I think Edson Barbosa is going to get this one done. And he deserves a really good fight after this. We need to stop feeding him all these contenders. He got robbed against Danny Gay. That shit honestly pissed me the fuck off. I, I think it's going to be a close fight, but I think Edson is just going to honestly pull away like he did in the City Cusa fight. I trust Edson Barbosa to get this one done by TKO. Third round TKO. I hope it's going to be a good card. Um, I don't know if I'm going to react to it. If it's a really solid card, I'm going to post a reaction to it. If I can get a lot of fights right, I'll post a reaction to it or some shit. Let me know what you guys think uh, once the fight happens or once the fights happen. I'll catch y'all.